Good morning and welcome. Welcome. Um, I just want to reinforce Chicka Dixon, who's uh, speaking to us in the foyer, uh, and his wonderful words of welcome, welcome, welcome. We are, of course, uh, on Gadigal land uh, and uh, celebrate that Aora Nation. So the open weekend, why do we do an open weekend? Uh, and I want to start with that because what you're going to experience today, uh, if you really make your way around the gallery, is it's a total celebration of Australian art. Just four months ago, we were dealing, just sorry, three months ago, two months ago, we were dealing with the big Picasso exhibition that literally took over our court nine behind us and all of our galleries here. Uh, and we knew that we had an opportunity to take the collection down and reinstate it. So what you're going to see today is, of course, the reinstated Australian collection. And I must say we're very happy to have our family back again, our Australian collections back again. And they're back again in a very, very different way. So if you start the journey in the vestibule, uh, which is our beautiful historic sandstone vestibule just here, you'll see that what was previously there were busts of our founding fathers on samples of New South Wales uh, marble. Today we've got Linda Marinon's wonderful whimsical figures made in plaster and painted and they include, and have a look, Joan Sutherland, um, convict Mary Wade, uh, who now meets and greets you as you come into the gallery. It's just a wonderful, joyful and quite whimsical start to the journey into the gallery. Then if you make your way through, and uh, behind me, I love this painting by Imance Tillers. It's called Counting One, Two, Three. And if I slip to the very end of the stage here and cast my eye into the court, uh, which we refer to as Court Eight, you'll catch a little glimpse of a brilliant painting by von Gerard called Milford Sound, which is very much a backbone, of course, to what Imance is painting here. He references both von Gerard and Colin McCann. So I want to talk just a little bit this morning about continuity and change, because we are dealing with a great continuity of artists, but we're also marking a great change to the way in which we're presenting our collections. So let's just take a little detour and look off here on my right and on your left uh, to that unbelievable Bugatti that is accelerating its way straight into the 20th and 21st century. Uh, it's a wonderful work by James Angus. Uh, it was uh, a Bugatti that was designed in the 1920s um, and it makes its way right into Grace Cossington Smith's Curve of the Bridge. The bridge, of course, opened in 1931, so the Bugatti would have made its way across that bridge, I'm sure, when it opened. So it's a lovely junction between a contemporary artist and, of course, Grace's curve of the bridge. Just behind us, too, and I think it's always lovely to keep going backwards and forwards between the 19th century and the 21st century, uh, interesting to reflect that our collections started, the first work was bought in 1874 uh, and it was a wonderful piece commissioned by our trustees called Apsley Falls and it really started a tradition where we buy works direct from artists and when they're painted. So in that court there's the most brilliant wall now of impressionist paintings, it's on your left as you go in, take a look, it's never looked so good. Um, and there you'll see uh, Charles Condor's wonderful Departure of the Orient at Circular Quay. Uh, that was painted and also bought in 1888. So there's a number of works on that wall. Have a little look at the labels, I'll tell you a big story. So the old courts we have repainted and rehung, and then we made our way through into here. Uh, and we have in fact totally transformed those galleries. We've removed walls, we've put a total new lighting system in. Uh, it's a very beautiful little lighting system. Have a look. It's uh, low energy lighting uh, and the walls are now quite brilliantly lit as if they are daylight. So you're now seeing the paintings as if they are in daylight. As you make your way through that gallery, you'll find uh, a special, a very special room that is of the same period it was designed by Vernon and it is our, was our boardroom. 
And in there is uh, a wonderful, again, continuity and change. You've got a fantastic duo of Elias Gruner's paintings, beautiful landscapes done in uh, 1919 and 1921. And in the middle is a fabulous contemporary installation by Janet Lawrence. And in her installations, you'll see, have a little look at all the animals that are in there. There's uh, a couple of dead owls, and one of the dead owls looks lovingly across to the Tweed River that's painted by Elias Gruner. And in that painting, you will see the trees are uh, dead. It's a denuded landscape. And two years after, uh, the very bucolic landscape that he painted, and, and probably one of the most favourite works in the collection called Spring Frost. So you'll start to see as you make your way around, there are these lovely junctions between artists talking to one another. Uh, one other room I love very much is a very big room. Uh, and what we've been able to do is make the rooms much bigger. Uh, and that room has got a, a, a great uh, suite of Pukamani grave posts. Uh, and they're from uh, Melville Island uh, and done by the Tiwi people. And those posts were commissioned by uh, Tony Tuxen. Uh, he was a deputy director here uh, and also a painter. So it's very lovely. You've got his paintings in that same space with the Pukamani poles. So again, they're talking to one another uh, across time and place. And then maybe just finally making our way in that same room, there's again the most extraordinary wall of uh, Sidney Nolan's works. Uh, and we're a bit bemused if you'd come here a couple of months ago, that particular wall had an extraordinary suite of Picasso's works, of course, and it was of uh, a very voluptuous Marie Therese Volta. Um, and we all know that Sidney Nolan would be very happy that he's replaced Marie Therese. Uh, so do have a look at that great wall in there. But really today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the open weekend because not only have we got the Australian galleries open, there is an extraordinary, extraordinary show, a very different take about Australian artists in the gallery upstairs on, a, on uh, Australian symbolism. It's called The Art of Dreams and curated by Denise Mamoki, a curator here at the gallery. So while you're going to see Roberts and Streeton here in our main galleries, upstairs you will see them painting in a very, very different way. So do make sure you go up and have a look at that show. Likewise, if you have children with you or grandchildren with you uh, and they're booked into workshops, we've produced this fabulous uh, book, activity book for children. I took it home to my granddaughter last night and she sat there uh, working her way through um, some fantastic uh, cutouts. It was a joy to see. Um, and likewise, at the very end of the galleries here, there's a wonderful window wall. Um, ironically, that was our smoking area, can you believe it? When we looked back over photographs, there was a big glass ashtray sitting there. Um, can you imagine smoking in the gallery today? Um, so that area and those uh, ashtrays have long been replaced and now we've got a, an app there on the Australian collection. So do sit down in those lounges that are the original lounges from that area uh, and make your way through looking at the artists and their works. Uh, there you'll see them in great detail, both archival photographs and sketches. Um, also, of course, on the weekend there are many different guided tours. You'll get a, guide, a tour of your lifetime if you take one of our tours with one of our guides. Uh, they're truly remarkable. Uh, and perhaps just talking a little bit about that continuity and change, uh, the Art Gallery of New South Wales is now poised to change. We have our new director, Michael Brand. Uh, he starts up at the end of June. He's our ninth director. Uh, he is Australian, uh, studied at the ANU and then moved out to, off to Harvard to do his postgrad studies. So he'll be here at the end of June, uh, which is terrific. But really, let's just enjoy today, enjoy all the offerings that are around. And I hope everybody has collected their program because the program is the one that will guide you round the building. I want to make special mention of a little uh, project that's only on for a couple of hours from 12 till 2 o'clock. Uh, in court eight, we have our conservators, our frame conservators and our paintings conservators. 
and they will be there and answering questions uh, about a very wonderful work, uh, Flood on the Darling by uh, Pigony. Uh, and what's happened is we've taken the painting out of its big frame uh, and we've cleaned the varnish off to start to look at ways in which we can retrieve some of the colour that was there when Pigony painted it. And if you ask the questions, you'll hear some answers, some we don't quite like, how, how difficult it's going to be to retrieve that original colour. But it's a lovely insight into what conservators do uh, and how they work with bringing colour back into our paintings. So please enjoy the day, uh, make the most of it. Uh, there's lots going on. Uh, and as I say, take your, um, your program of events and uh, enjoy it all. Thanks, everybody.